Hello and welcome to my channel. Uh, Vice Rhino here, Cirrus down there, Hi. and over here we have Thomas and Lydia Smith of the Where There's Woe Hello. podcast. Hello, everybody. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Thomas has a couple other podcasts too. Something like um, <laughs> Nah, <laughs> Your Old Dad's um, Serious Inquiries Only, and um, oh, 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 uh, Opening Arguments. Opening oh, Arguments. Back on yeah. Opening Arguments. That's right. <laughs> Something like Very... twelve or thirteen. Another one. <laughs> yeah. We we figured how many we figured out like we released 34 like above 30 yeah, yeah episodes last yeah. month. It was insane. In it's 29 stupid. days. Yeah, it's I don't want it. No one likes yeah. the situation. <laughs> <It's> not... <laughs> yeah, and no, all all of it was where there's woke at the end of the month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. Boom, 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 boom. I think is what I said. But that's, one of the you episodes. know what? I I've so in my podcast rotation of the um where there's woke is perfect because usually like i have so many podcasts i listen to but then once i'm all caught up i feel lost mm. yeah and so where those woke is perfectly positioned that all the drops mm. that happen at the end of the month are like okay i'm all caught up what do i listen to now yeah. oh there's six new episodes of that it's like like classic netflix <laughs> that's too, definitely right? so what we intended it. it's yeah. totally designed that way for specifically you actually we had you in mind <laughs> Like, this you were perfect. just like people yeah, feel you. this yeah. emptiness when they're done yeah. Trust me, i know what to do i've gotten so busy that i very much have that process of looking at my podcast player and there's 50 things and i gotta be real judgy you know like it when i'm like i have all the time for only like one or two things yeah. it's like hey you you're not good enough for this situation or you you, you are good enough you know <laughs> I wish I was back when I just listened to everything and then finished it. Well, you know how I solved that a while back? I went on a road trip to Mendocino by myself mm. for four hours and just listened to podcasts like back to back to back. And no one else was in the car. It was completely silent. It was great. You should do that. You know how they have the thing where they're like, oh, I'm too, I don't want to watch a movie. That's too much commitment. Instead, I'll binge seven yes. episodes of a yeah. TV show. You know, yeah. it's And like, it's the uh, same the, thing. Same with podcasts where I'm like, Even I should worse. listen to this audio book. <laughs> ah, that's too long. <laughs> I'll just listen to 40 podcast episodes that are an hour. <laughs> yeah, I'm the I'm the opposite. I'm just like, oh, I want to listen to a podcast, but I could play an audio. But off, oftentimes it ends up with, oh, I'm listening to the same audiobook that I've listened to again, but I really like it. I just want to hear James Mars just talking at me again. <laughs> well, I, I actually do have a couple podcasts that um, when I get to like, if I'm all caught up and I haven't figured out what to listen to next, I will go back and re-listen to the archives. And one of those podcasts is Dear Old Dads. Oh, Aww. that's awesome. Um, and that's because I feel like listening to that podcast, like 
And I, I love that the three of you disagree with so much on that one. <laughs> it's like if, yeah. if you all agreed, it would just be like, OK, this is another this is what we think of parenting and we are all right. Ha ha ha. But like yeah. when you disagree, you get to hear like talking it out and the pros and cons of various positions and everything. Yeah. I, like I feel like it's actually has made me not just a better father, but like a better person. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's wow. That's awesome to hear. Seriously. Thank you so much. I, I love being a part of that show. Like that's one of those ones where I just, I feel like I'm a fan of the show. I just, I'm a fan of Eli. Let's face it. I think <laughs> Eli Bosnick is the funniest person on earth. And so I'm kind of like, I, it's like I've won a fantasy camp thing where I get to like be on the podcast. With, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, they have those things where they're like, come throw football with Tom You're Brady. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's like, yeah, like you beat too, everyone. Be, so, a, be a one hundred dollar um, patron, be a guest on the show for a day. Yeah, I feel yeah, yeah, you're that's always that's there. So, yeah. <laughs> so I think uh, my favorite Eli Bosnick moment is one that might not be one that anyone except for me or him is aware of. Um, but so when I was on God Awful Movies, um, he at the at the end of the record, he was just he was doing the Eli thing where it's like, oh yeah, no, it's been great. I, I want to invite you on do other stuff whatever mm -hmm. and uh, one of the things he said was like I i'd love to have you come on and talk about such and such on maybe even dear old dads <laughs> and then uh -huh. that was the exact like the next episode that dropped i think it was a patron only like question answer one um one of the questions was will you ever have any guests guests on the podcast <laughs> and you and tom were both immediately like fuck no that's never <laughs> happened no never ever and eli was just like stone silence and, oh i don't okay. know if that i can give you more information because the no guest policy is probably mostly eli so i think was it yeah so <laughs> oh, I, okay. so I think he remembered like wait a minute <laughs> I probably sh can't react because I, I just told so <laughs> see i don't even know i might be just reading into that because like you know, sometimes people don't say something for a little no, bit. No, we have guests but... on Patreon stuff sometimes. We've had a few guests. Yes, on you Patreon. had the, um, yeah, I think you did the. Uh... We've, had, we've, had, we've had this person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just random fan of the podcast yeah. we had on, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, let's let's talk about where those woke a bit. Uh, yeah. So what uh, what kind of inspired you to start the pod? Like, why what what need are you filling with this podcast? Gosh, mm. uh, well, for. Part of it, I guess the more boring answer is part of it is serious inquiries only was just doing too many different things. Like it yeah. was, you, you mentioned before we went on uh, having ADHD. And so it yeah. was like ADHD, the podcast where it's like, it's, it is science, but it's also commentary. But it's also this. Well, and you're it's like, interested in everything. So, yeah, yeah, it's hard. It, there are uh, um, definitely really nice fans who are like, yeah, we're here for the journey too, whatever. But it became hard to like pitch it. You know, it's like, it's the podcast where just whatever, man, like it's going to be something. <laughs> you can't whatever just talk about talk it like about. it's Seinfeld real quick. It's, it's a show about Seinfeld. nothing. I was yeah. just going to make the yeah. inverse Seinfeld. Show. It's a show about it, just something. There's always something, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I had the idea like, oh, I should split off. One, one thing I really enjoyed doing that I didn't get to do enough because I never felt like, oh, how much do people want this on this science-y show is mm -hmm. this very thing that we're doing on Where There's Woke, which is breaking down fake woke controversies and going in and like setting the record straight because there have been a few that I was, you know, a few that I was around for um, that I covered on the show. And, I, and it's funny how much they just go down in history as forever the anti-woke version of it yeah. and mm -hmm. they they're so good they've got all this machinery of people that just i can't tell if they're part of a grand conspiracy or if they all just love saying the same exact thing over and over but they get their talking points from somebody and they just go everywhere and trolls repeat their versions of this yeah. oh did you hear this person got fired because he's white and then yeah. they killed his family and then in you, front of him and, and then you accidentally yeah. discover Chris Rufo and you're like, oh, yeah. this is where some of it's coming from. That, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's where a lot of it's coming from. Just went on yep. Joe Rogan. But it, oh, it, every oh, single oh, yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Rogan always shows up. Um, yeah, so in your last episode, you're you're currently doing a deep dive into Jordan Peterson. Um, of sorts. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, it there's, wasn't intended to be. <laughs> yeah. There's so many podcasts that do a like, you know, I don't know, behind the bastards type, like, here's this guy. We're not, we're not so much doing a like, here's everything about this person, but we are doing, we wanted to, I'll be honest, that one, we just wanted to make fun of his stupid video about the Ben Shapiro rap. That's all we <laughs> yeah. wanted to do. Ben Shapiro's rap song, awful. He does, and Jordan Peterson goes on YouTube for an hour, like 52 minutes yeah. and just says the dumbest shit about it, analyzing it like it's high art. And I think he really believes, I don't yeah. know, I can't tell. Yeah. He's, he's did, really did good at the grip. Did he cry about it like he does about Pinocchio? Practically. I mean, practically. <laughs> it's just so beautiful when the, oh, when, the, yeah. when Tom McDonald is, is saying words that I don't understand because I'm old. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's it's the ways he blows smoke up both of their asses is it's unreal. And so yeah. I want to make fun of that. And in two minutes into the video, he makes a claim about well, back in two two thousand sixteen, I can't you can't help but try to do an impression. I'm not good at it, but like you can't help it. Oh, well, back well, yeah, we did the the research that showed the woke the the highest predictors. They're idiots and they're women and they're and like wild claim that instantly you're like, well, that's insane. There's no yeah. way that's real. Yeah. And I wanted to track it down. And so we thought we were just going to do this video about that or this podcast about that video. And then it took us down a rabbit hole that we we haven't even finished yet. Like we we've done a bunch of research. We have like episodes ready, like yeah. ready to record. But it's so it's so it's a real deep dive into like this research, this mystery research that he says proves that wokists <laughs> are stupid and that they're women and they're feminine like yeah. and all that. And it's it's wild. It's going to be a wild ride. Some so. weird just, stuff about his business dealings mm -hmm. that we're finding. I've been spending a lot of time on open corporates and like you did, you did say there's, a, there's the, a chance he might have engaged in fraud a little bit. Potentially a little bit, little bit. Little uh, well, bit. It depend on how you define it. And it also depends. I, I actually don't know, like if if he defrauded people, but they're OK with it. Does that still count? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that? I don't know. <laughs> it's. It's so weird. Like, so my, I, I have a prediction. I have, I have a prediction on that research, whether regardless of what angle that research ends up going, my prediction is going to be, Oh wait, you're, you're telling me that minority groups or groups that are typically oppressed or disenfranchised happen to also end up being more quote woke. Wow. That's so strange. That's yeah. such insightful research. Like I can, I'm just imagining that it's going to end up going that route it's like when they uh it's like when conservatives talk about oh well there's these mexicans who are voting for democrats it's like well if you look at the policies they're supporting <laughs> yeah. sometimes it it tends to not it's screw them over as much sense, weird yeah. that yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so the the last episode it actually kind of reminded me of a story that uh, Cyrus and i actually covered where tim pool had posted a link to an article that was like oh according to a scientific study People who are leftists are also psychopaths. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. this is involved in that. This, this is involved in that. that one as well. I, I yeah, thought that that it's might be coming up. Yeah, but like, yeah, so no, it's, I, it's yeah. Go ahead, sorry. Uh, uh, um, the night we covered that, Cirrus, like all day, he was just he was getting kind of annoyed at me because I kept on like messaging him like a little child, like, "Oh my god, it gets worse. Oh my god, I can't wait to tell you about this. It gets so much worse." Yeah, that's and our Facebook just, messenger yeah, too. Every time, yeah, it's so fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, it's it. Go oh, good. No, I was I was going to change the subject. So if you got more, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's it's there's a lot of research. Um, and another thing that that he does that I, I think I haven't even gotten a chance to say yet. I probably will repeat this on when we record it. But what he loves to do, and this is something that ties into serious inquiries only, is I think people are not very science literate on average, mm -hmm. um, and they and they don't know that when you have something that says, "Did you know that X correlates with X or with Y?" Mm -hmm. Rather, uh, X correlates with Y. And it'll be like, you know, authoritarians are, they're less open. And it's like, yeah, sure. There can be but, little correlations. But, but if you see- margarine sales also correlate with divorce rates. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it may even be causal. Relate with, uh, with ice cream sales. Could, yeah. And, it, and even when it's something that might be a causal link, like I very much think that there are per, big five personality traits that make sense to relate to politics, you know, like uh, openness to experience correlates mm, with liberalism. And, yeah. But it's not as much as you think. And what you'll see Jordan Peterson do is make statements that are like several iterations down from that, where it's like, well, you see that this correlates well, and they're less open. Yeah. You saw, and he even got to the point in that video, uh, in a different video, an older one, where he claimed like, so what happens is uh, liberals start companies and conservatives run them because, and it was because of like the <laughs> industriousness and like, and it's like, wow. are you kidding? This is like a 0 0.2 correlation. That means like on average, a couple more liberals are this than that. And like, he'll, he'll extrapolate. And not only that, you're down several steps in the math to where like the effect is going to be invisible. At that it's point. it's like, minimal which, at that point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he'll just claim it like it's this true, like this 100% truth. And it's so it's got to be a truism. People well, think that's smart, I guess. But I think <laughs> also like the self-help industry depends on stuff yeah, like that, right? Yeah. So like his book sales depend on people being able to say, I am part of that group. And so I can expect X, Y, or Z. Yeah. Um, and without that, you know, individual differences, I don't think is very helpful for his book sales. Yep. And, and <laughs> Peter, Peterson in particular, he's he's very good at um, sounding intelligent while he's saying something completely off yes. the rails stupid. We're saying yes. nothing at all. Yes. 
Um, yeah, or saying just, something obvious. All three of those. Like it'll be, oh, okay, that's a fine message, but like I could have told you that in a fortune cookie. Like I could have told you. Well, well in, in, in that <laughs> video, in that video that we were watching when he was like breaking down the rap lyrics, he says, you know, like this is a minor thing. This is a minor thing. And then the next time he says it, he goes, This is a pecune, which means minor yeah. thing. And we're like, oh my God, you're wow. so you're just you're just so smart. sounding <laughs> verbose because it makes you sound smarter yeah. when half yeah. the people here don't know the word you're saying. It's like um and his furrowed I, brow. Yeah. I'm not a. Oh. I'm not sure if any of you know the channel Healthy Gamer GG, uh, mm -hmm. but his so his he's a he's a uh, therapist who ended up making a YouTube channel about mental health, and one of the things he's he points out in that channel is that oftentimes, especially when you get people like Jordan Peterson, they'll do that hard referencing the data to sound smart. Yeah. And so what uh what the guy behind Healthy, Healthy Gamer GG will do is he'll go, so look, this data is really fun. This data is really neat and it can tell you a story, but oftentimes we tend to forget the human element that actually is responsible for this data in the first place when we do that. Mm -hmm. And so if you're just looking at that data and asking somebody who you think is an expert to tell you the story behind that data, it's a really easy way to get misled, especially down the mental health rabbit hole where like you're looking yeah. for somebody who seems like their life is put together. So you're like, oh, this person's got it figured out. I'm going to listen to them so I can have it figured out too. And yeah. then you find out that, you know, they needed to spend six months in a coma in Russia to get over <laughs> opioid addiction. And now suddenly they're not quite as put together as you once thought. They covered that on Where There's Woke. <laughs> oh, only a little bit. But yeah, and not only that, I found it really interesting too. This was only a minor research thing that I didn't look super deep into. But when I was just looking at some of the big five psychological research uh, because, you know, he makes such broad claims based on it. Like, mm -hmm. again, it's these correlations that are like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 means like, OK, there's a little bit of a correlation. And he'll just state his ironclad truth. But one thing I found interesting was I was just quickly fact checking like, hey, is there, you know, I was Googling, like, are these the, these big differences by gender? And it's interesting because sometimes, yeah, like there are some. And then I saw something that said, well, there was one study that said, um, yes, there are differences with big five personality traits. So that's the, you know, the openness, the whatever, you'll know. I can't remember them because my memory sucks. Yeah, all yeah, those nice. things. Yeah. But then yeah. when they ask the questions in terms of like, rather than more direct, they ask like indirect, like impl like more getting at it without letting the person you're asking know what you're asking. You know, like kind of more, like when um, you do a psych eval where implicit. you ask a question five different ways. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. they said when you do implicit like traits of that, it almost disappears, suggesting that a lot of it is, men want to signal their certain things and women want to signal their certain things. Yeah. So like, it's yeah. amazing how many of these traditional gender role things it's like, well, is that really there? Or like, is it because people are also socialized to present that way? It's, yeah, it's, it's where you have filling. like yeah. question one, are you kind question two? Here's a <laughs> functional version of the good Samaritan. What would you do? And yeah, Oh no, yeah. your answer isn't actually the answer a kind person would give. Maybe you're not kind, <laughs> like <laughs> kind of like that. That's they get that a lot with the are you racist? They'll ask people in oh, different polls yeah. like racist. No, I'm not racist. Do you think black people are, you know, inferior? Well, yeah, but I'm not racist about <laughs> oh, it. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's how what, people, so, people li Americans will literally answer that way in certain areas. So, <laughs> so I, I oh, for sorry, one of on for right. one of my videos, I had to order this 1952 look magazine. Ah. Um, <laughs> So there's there's an article in it that is about like errors that are in the Bible or whatever. And it gets mm. it's it's one of those things that gets referenced all the time as just like, you know, people say, oh, there's more than 50,000 errors in the Bible. Mm. And nobody really knows where that number comes from. It, it yeah. comes from this magazine from 1952. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, that's cool. Um, but while I was reading through it, uh, apparently this issue came right after an issue that was uh, a little bit critical of the Jim Crow laws. So this one is full of letters to the editor from people being like, oh, black people don't want to wow. sit with white people anyway. They don't want to be with oh, us anyway. Oh, God. And That's it's crazy. just, it's... it. And then it, you hear people argue about um, uh, college, what is it? Uh, HBCUs? No, college admission. Oh, uh, oh. yeah, yeah. Um, What's yeah. the term? So I'm <laughs> no. so tired. But they'll, they'll do the same arguments where... D affirmative, action. Basically, affirmative, affirmative action, action. Yeah. yeah they they'll be arguing about affirmative action they'll be like actually people of color don't want that because then it seems unfair and people question whether they're even there it's like oh that's the same exact argument from this magazine you're looking at in 1951 yeah. or whatever that's, that's yeah. one of the things that struck me about it, is how much of the argumentation is exactly, exactly the, same. the same yeah 100 like you this. know when i was doing starting up where there's woke um initially it was just me and then uh, fortunately i've got uh, lydia with me but when it was just me i was doing some research because i was like oh i want to do I can't believe I still haven't done this. I don't have time. I want to do like the first like 
-hmm. PC story Mm because it's there and I've done some research on it. It's going to be really interesting. But I came across semi related to it, a speech by um, H.W. Bush in 1991 or something. And it is indistinguishable from speeches now about like the whole I would have thought, you know, going through the the 2010s, the, the beginning of this like higher ed anti, you know, the, the college kids that felt pretty new to me Mm because I was in my twenties and getting thirties. It felt like they were coming up with a new thing. Like, Oh yeah, the college kids, they're so woke. They're going in cat box, all that crap. And then you look at this 1991 George HW Bush speech and it's exactly the same rhetoric. It's the same, like, Hey, they're cheap. We, you want Western values and it's like, wow, that's literally identical to what it is now. They don't get any new arguments. It's the same game all for, decades yeah. crazy just yeah. like when people do the whole uh people these days like kids these days don't want to work that kind of shtick and then you you if you actually look up uh this generation yeah, was, doesn't want to work you goes can back find, to like 2500s bce yeah, yeah you can yeah. you can find yeah. that i found a so i found a like a twitter thread that just cataloged it just yes. in 30 year increments i saw that same thread yes and I, uh, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make a video on this. Credit the person oh, who did great. it, and then because I know that there's a. Uh, so for for reference, like I live in Georgia, uh, and I live in Marjorie Taylor Greene's district in oh, uh, Georgia. So, so sorry. <laughs> um, you can you can use that as a as a barometer for what conversations with people on the street are like here. I've done a video about conversations I've had with people here. in bars. Yeah, here. your bar, your bar friend. Yes, uh, I don't want to <laughs> use that. But but the, the first words he said to me was were the real problem these days in America is satanic pedophiles. Do you agree, sir? And the dude's like a 23-year-old. And I'm just like, you are not boomer enough to be falling for this kind of shit. <laughs> oh my God. But to the, the reason I say that, so sometimes when I find those threads, I'm like, I know that these people who are friends of mine who are conservative they're not looking at twitter they don't give a shit about that mm. they're on facebook so like you know what let me go ahead and make that as a uh, let me make a video about that because i'll i'll hear them say this stuff like nobody wants to work these days or people are just so pc these days or any of those things and then you you find that information, you throw it out there, suddenly it's a conversation piece the next day. I don't know. Maybe eventually some of these people will change their mind. So a little bit. They also There's- have church and AM radio where they get the same, you know, we don't really have those things as much on the left. It's hard to unify in that way. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we don't we don't have somebody at a pulpit with a book that says <laughs> that everything he's saying is 100 percent true. Just don't read it. So you find the exact words he's using. Yeah, but your, your comment on them on him not being boomer enough just kind of reminded me the, uh, one of the articles I talked about the um, the title of um, in this 1952 magazine was like, are U.S. teenagers abandoning their freedom? Oh, yeah, and, you were mentioning that yeah, one. So I was expecting that to be more along the lines of like, oh, right wing stuff like, oh, they these days are yeah. all about the communism. They don't love the freedom or whatever. But no, it was actually a very thoughtful piece about how teenagers who in the 1952s, they grew up to be boomers. Um, mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. Would they have been boomers? If they're teenagers? Uh, they might be the one before that. They somewhere, might be Joe somewhere Biden's generation. <laughs> in, in that general vicinity. And they were talking about how like on surveys, um, these people were willing to um go too far in the direction of like security like extra right, police extra right. oh, yeah. enforcement trading, trading freedom and, like, security yeah and and like uh, and one of the issues that came up was immigration we need to be harsher mm. on immigrants and not let them in and so and and i as i was reading it i was just like oh this sounds like the old people in the republican party right now yeah yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I wonder where they got 50s, those ideas. you have like red scare com- yeah, you know, like a lot of that uh, it's yeah. And then sometimes you look back and you're like, well, back then though, they like, we didn't have a border wall at all. We didn't have, you know, like it was so, I almost wish we could go back to some of that. Like in some ways, the immigration we had of old was like way, we let way more people in. It wasn't a big issue. (laughs) If you can get there, it's fine. (laughs) Yeah. And it's like, there's still the same arguments, but they're, the right is actually making more progress and still arguing the same things on it. It's, it's tough. But I mean, speaking of going back in time, um, mm. pr- one of my favorite things about the Where There's Woke podcast is because it is that you have a 78 episode series on the James <laughs> Webb telescope that starts with, should it be called James Webb? And ends with a legal drama about oh my God. black people in the South being sentenced to death potentially. And yeah, yeah. 
it, it's, just, it's such a wild I'm glad ride. someone listened to that because I, I thought it was the <laughs> most interesting thing in the world. But I knew like some people aren't going to come along with me on this. I don't know if they did. I don't I, I, I'm too scared to look like because it was like it was <laughs> yeah. so interesting to me that I was like you're just like this I, is my baby I don't want to know well I have to talk about it I don't know if that's an ADHD thing that you guys have too but it's like yeah. no this is there's stuff I leave behind but this was like no I have to talk about this it's so fascinating and then it got to the point where I was like I've done so many episodes on this and it's like nothing to do with like wokeism at this point but oh so I mean, interesting it, yeah, that just, it just sounds so. like a yeah. hyperfixation to me like, like a really not, strong hyperfixation not wanting black people to get the death penalty when there's zero evidence that they committed the crime right unfortunately well, no, it, is a woke position nowadays it, it, it <laughs> yeah. really i think the debate on one thing that sends normies toward the anti-woke which i think is an important thing to keep in mind because that's where you know that's where we lose a lot is if normal people average people yeah. are 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 swayed by these arguments one place is the historical stuff oh are you judging historical figures too harshly like are you trying to rewrite history and so part of that journey was like well, I don't know. Look back in history and you can actually find this amazing character, uh, Governor Earl Brewer or something. I can't mm -hmm. believe I remember the name um, who is just there has to be a movie about this. Like I was doing this research yeah. and I hope I presented it well because it has to be a fucking movie. Oh, sorry. Did we curse on this? I didn't. I never. I forgot to ask. Yes. You can't, oh, you can't say, <laughs> no. so, so you can't say the fuck word. You can't say the shit word and you can't say the ass word. OK, uh, but other words, as long, <laughs> as, you, was, as long as you stay away from slurs, we're fine. One thing. Yeah. One thing that is really very true that I, I wish people would keep in mind is like it's not true that like universally people were super racist at that time. Like, yeah. no, there were people, not only by the way, all the people of color like knew better because they, <laughs> you know, but like also there were plenty of white people who are like, Jesus, this is bad. I think this is bad. Everybody like, yeah. I think, I think history is going to look bad, like on, on us badly. Yeah. And they were right. And those people existed too. And you don't, it's not a question of like, we can only, we have to honor the racist because the, everyone was racist. Like, no, no, actually not. Like there were people yeah. who were really doing good work back then. Oh, I don't, um, I, have you heard of the slave Bible? Oh, that sounds familiar. What is, uh, it's, I can't remember though. So the way it's usually presented is that it's the Bible that they, uh, they cut out all of the anti-slavery stuff from the Bible. So that it would make the slaves more complacent. Oh, oh wow. Um, that's the way it's presented by the museum of the Bible. What's the museum um, of the Bible? What's the museum of the Bible? You yeah. don't museum know that time? Oh my God. There's a the museum of the Bible. Like yes, one? it's an, oh, Is, you, you wow. have to look into this because they, okay. they, they like steal shit from the Middle East. They, they put up wow. forgeries. Oh, man. They, um, it, like they, they've had to send so much stuff back to countries that it was like smuggled out of. Yeah. They've been caught with fakes. Um, yeah, no, it's, wow. it's okay. bad shit. Um, but one of the things they got was called the slave Bible. Uh, there's only three copies of the thing in existence at any time you read about it in the media. Most of the time, it's just repeating what the Museum of the Bible says about it. Hmm. Um, but it, it became relevant for one of my videos, and I, I had to look into it a little bit. And um, it turns out that, shocker, they completely lied about it. Um, <laughs> it was actually originally commissioned by uh, this Anglican bishop who was like the first abolitionist in the Church of England. Oh. And oh, he, so he wanted, complete opposite. Yeah. So he wanted to put together yeah. a Bible that um or he, he wanted to put together a series of things that would be geared towards slaves so that he could like educate them mm -hmm. so that when they were freed, they would have a you know, they wouldn't start from nothing. They would have an education, at least a little bit of an education. And in order to um but in order to appease the slaveholders, he said something about like, okay, we'll put together this thing and like you know, make sure it focuses on this, that, and the other, and also the duties of slaves to their masters. Um, but like mm -hmm. explicitly, he was trying to get them educated so that they'd have a better time of it when they were freed. But like the need to control the narrative and be like, oh, well, the Bible is actually anti-slavery, even though yeah. it says slaves beat your uh, masters, beat your slaves this much. Yeah, that's I've always been torn about those arguments from the left where it's a lot of like liberal Christians are like, no, actually, it's super cool. And then my response in my head, I was always like, why would it be? Do you think they were super progressive in Bible times? Because I I don't think they were. It's, and I guess like, I, yeah, I, I have a whole slide that I bring out all the time, which has only a partial list of verses in the Bible that explicitly endorse slavery. And it like it takes up the whole screen. Yeah. Oh, wow. And and it's not just Old Testament stuff either. Like there's there's like eight or nine passages in the, in the New, New Testament. Testament. 
that and it says slaves obey your masters and uh, even goes to the extent of saying not just the ones who are kind but also the ones who are cruel well especially the ones who are cruel if they are your brothers in christ yeah um or like when paul sees a slave and it's just like you know if you go back to your master he's gonna fucking kill you but it's the christian thing to do to go back to your master <laughs> wow. so well, go get off that's <laughs> not quite how it went i mean <laughs> You're going to get debunked in real time. <laughs> well, no, that, that was the book of Philemon. And it was um, Paul was writing to the slave owner saying, hey, I'm sending your escaped slave back to you. Pretty please set him free. But if you don't, that's OK. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I did a whole podcast on the no Bible. And then my brain was like, we don't need this information. So I forgot it all. I don't remember what's <laughs> That's in there. Right. Oh, terrible. Um, that was, I read, um, read through the whole fucking thing. Was that atheistically holds. speaking or? No, Thomas in the Bible. It's Thomas still up, Bible. but it's terrible. I, I'll get <laughs> messages from people who's like, I just finished the whole thing. I'm like, God, that's embarrassing. It's like a you know video from. <laughs> Yeah, it's like if you see something like poetry you wrote when you were in high school or something. It's or just like, like, like your oh, first, like, this is from 2010 to yeah. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> well, yeah. I mm, there there are some videos that are private on my channel. So uh, around the mm. 2016 era when I started my channel, the reason I started is because all the atheist YouTubers that I was watching had moved on to politics and stuff, and most yeah. of them went right wing. Yeah, um, anti-feminism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like Sargon was in there. Yeah. Um, what's his face? Armored skeptic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a few of them like that but um yeah so when i started i was i kind of had those leanings as well and there were a few videos that i did that were like oh i'm like i like that there's a record of me having changed my position on this but yeah. i don't like that someone could come to that and not yeah. be yeah. anything else of mine right no context and yeah, yeah exactly I like, just actually, hang on the fact that I think people are so uninterested that they'll never, hopefully never go back and look at my, at my well, old crap. <laughs> so you're, you're actually a contributing factor to why I didn't um, end up going like, after because like that interaction that you had with Sargon at the myths of Milwaukee or whatever. <laughs> wow. Was supposed to be a debate. Yeah. But they just didn't moderate anything. Yeah, well, I, that yeah. That's like an even better story. I, I mean, no, like, it, what it was I, supposed I, to start out with. Well, to be fair, I think it was more that it was supposed to be me interviewing or having a conversation with him, but I was like, I'm not doing that. I'll go, I'll do it if, well, I, 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 yeah, I, I can tell the original story if you yeah. want. Like, I, I, they, that, <laughs> that organization was this weird Jekyll and Hyde thing where it was like half cool people and half shitty people. And I didn't know this. I, I'm in California. I had no fucking idea what yeah. Milwaukee people are doing. No offense mm -hmm. against them, but I didn't know. I didn't know the like, specific politics of this group so i that was my first conference appearance was the year prior year prior to this debate that you're yeah. talking about and it was great it was amazing everyone was super cool i did a talk about having finished the bible it was a super positive experience and so when they were like oh yeah you want to come next year i was like fucking yeah of course this is awesome and um, then it and then it flipped they had like a coup and like the you know the oh. shitty people took over i didn't know this i was just talking to them and so at first they were like we're getting dave rubin and you can interview dave rubin and i was like fucking yes because that guy's an empty paper bag of nothing like i was like yeah. i will ask him any question about anything and he'll be like oh well, the regressive left like it was all he would do the whole time and but and then i find regressive left sir <laughs> <laughs> and i think he um I don't know, must have looked me up or realized that like, oh, this wouldn't be just someone kissing his ass. So he backed out. Yeah. And so they were like, we got to find someone, uh, you know, and I was like, OK, whatever. I'll, I already committed. And so they they said we, we got Sargon Avocado. I was like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Who's, what is that? I don't know what that is. I was not a YouTube guy. No offense. But like, I just didn't know any of them um and so they're like yeah it'll, here it'll you fine. are on youtube <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know no, yeah no problem with it but i just wasn't into those youtuber guys like I, I didn't even when i was an atheist or sorry i am an atheist even when i was like into the new atheism stuff mm -hmm. like a you lot of them like just kind of irked me content. no yeah because it's, yeah. it's really angry and mean in a lot of ways that i didn't like so well i i think so for me it was um it was kind of like a catharsis as i was coming out of religion because i i used to be a yeah. Christian, mm -hmm. um, like an evolution denying, um, evangelical Christian. Same here. Um, what did so, <laughs> so like the, the, the harsh meanness to it is it provides catharsis. I, For um, sure. Yeah. 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 I think it's more about how it was targeted because they, they like, it depends on where you're going. And I think a lot of them took that anti-feminist route. Yeah. And even though I like, I'm not going to claim that I was super, you know, feminist and woke from the beginning. I also, what used to be conservative as raised conservative, yeah. but I was enough. It was enough to where I felt like they weren't doing skepticism. Well, like I felt like 
when you're when you're righteously angry at something that deserves it, it's like, yeah, that's great. But when you apply those same uh, rhetorical techniques of just total dismissal and just complete, but you do it to something that doesn't deserve it, all of a sudden it's like, oh, then I'm questioning everything you say. It looks, like it looks yeah. weird once you start doing that. Yeah, if you're doing that to this woman, Rebecca Watson, who said, hey, guys, maybe don't do that about yeah. getting proposition in the elevator. I'm like, you're going to go that hard against that? Well, maybe you're not as right about or, things as I might have thought. Like you know? when you start getting a armored skeptic angry at Bill Nye for talking about there being more than two genders. He's like, no, it made me angry. I'm like, oh, but, but why did it make you? Why was the anger the response you had? Yeah. Why, is, why is that where you went? <laughs> so yeah, that Sargon. I was like, all right, I'll do it because I already committed. Uh, yeah. And so I, and I honestly, I, I didn't know anything about him. I, I saw at the time it was the quote that I just saw in the chat. Like I wouldn't even rape you. Oh was yeah, thing he said. That one. Yeah. And so I mainly yeah. wanted to confront him on that. And just I thought in my mind, well, I was here last year and it was a really great liberal audience. So like I feel like people aren't going to like this guy. But he had a just a, a fan club that occupied the front like three rows. Yeah. And that was, I'll, I'll be honest, that was, at the time, it was pretty traumatic. It wasn't anything I was ready for. Like, I wasn't ready for that level of shittiness, you know? I just wasn't, was, like, I, I knew he was shitty, but... Yeah. It's amazing the audience he's cultivated. Yeah, but and um, the fact that that would happen, like, like people that mean would be in the front of a thing, like, jeering at me on yeah. a stage was not something I was ready for. Really so it was, bad. at the time it was really bad. Having gone through two or three things that are worse than that by now, I look back fondly on that experience and I uh, <laughs> would love to go back to that God. debate. Yeah, but um, <laughs> so with, with regards to that though, like that was one of the things that kind of made me start seeing the cracks in Sargon. Wow. Like I, I didn't, until I saw that, the, the clips of you versus him or whatever, I didn't know about the, uh, about his comment about mm -hmm. raping her wow. um so when when i saw that video i was it was just like oh this is the kind of person he is yeah it's like wow but what, but what does an mp even do i don't know you're running for the position what do you think <laughs> yeah uh, i think it, it was that com uh combined with um and eli comes back into it um because mm -hmm. like another big talking point i don't know if it still is but at the time um there like the big talking point was like, oh, the, the left doesn't have jokes. They can't do jokes. They're afraid of edgy humor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I'd turn on God awful movies and he'd talk right, about digging up right. Phyllis Schlafly's corpse. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. mm, don't they be, have edgy humor though? Yeah. It's just, a, yeah. it's just the, the edgy humor is aimed in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And somehow that is the same thing as they don't have edgy humor at all to those people. Cause I had the, yeah. And people disagree about that. Like, I, I still don't know for sure. Like, hey, is it this joke okay or that joke is okay? What do I think about oh. it? And I think the number one thing I try to do with where there's woke is often just a context debunk, I call it, which is like, hey, this actually isn't as big a deal. Like, even if true, why is this a big deal? Like yeah. someone, it's always, they'll, they'll be like, someone had an opinion, basically. Someone had a woke opinion yeah. somewhere. And it'll be like, fucking no, it'll be a nobody. It'll be a student who wrote a newsletter and put it on something Got that nobody read. Likes. And <laughs> yeah. then the, the anti-woke industrial complex will grab it and say, this is Barack Obama. He's actually, this is who this is. That's them. They're in charge. And it, I'll, I'll, I'll it. often just be like, well, wh what is really happening here? Like a student said they didn't like a joke. What if they're wrong? Oh, they're wrong. Like they, you could just be like, oh, that's a dumb woke thing. That's wrong. End of thing. Yeah. You, like they blow it into this whole yeah. massive thing that you can tell they are putting so much okay. more energy to it that, that it's not skeptical. It's not rational. It's just, yeah, it, it, yeah it's there, disinformation. There are a lot of things that it comes back to like this. This was a college kid doing something that like, even if your point is 100% correct, it's a college kid doing a stupid yeah, thing. Like, yeah, exactly. For content. When I was, when I was in college, I still it, like, I, I vividly remember this because I think back on it with great embarrassment. Um, I was like racing the chairs from the computer lab down the hall and we had a big <laughs> ramp at the end and we'd like, yeah. like that's like down the on the scale of things like, to be embarrassed about. That's like not hey, even on that well, I mean, this, yeah. this is back when I was a good little Christian boy, but it, like, yeah. it's still, like I remember other people kind of like giving me the side eye, like, why is he acting like a 10 year old sort of thing? <laughs> but like you, you're still, you're still young enough that stuff like, like just juvenile shit like that just 
Seems and like what I idea. what I love about that argument, I'm sure folks have heard this. I love that you will hear them give a nod to the the, the anti woke people. Oh, college is supposed to be a place where you where you try on new ideas. Yeah. It's a place where you explore. And I I'm like 100 percent agree, man. But then they don't do the thing where they're like, one of those ideas you could be trying out is wokeness. Like you could be trying out the idea that like, hey, I don't like when you say that. And like, maybe you're wrong. Maybe you're a student who's like, I don't think you should be able to be a speaker here. And maybe you're wrong and eventually you grow out of it. But they don't let that be a thing you can just try no, out. No, you're like, able to try like, out any else. idea except the idea <laughs> they don't like. Yeah. yeah. And that means you've gone too far and it's like... It's so obvious that, that yeah. it, anyway, <laughs> it's so, right, that's I, why we started it is like, I can't stop being mad right. about these arguments that are bad. <laughs> that reminds me, there's a, so on, on my channel, cause I cover the political stuff all the time. I've been trying to move away from just doing video responses to things cause it, they make me angry. <laughs> yeah. So as a, as a result, I've been debating on just doing a series called the point is to make you angry hmm. about how so much of that content from the, from yeah. the right wing it's not there to make you think it's not there to make mm -hmm. you feel any particular way about an issue. It's not there to expand your, your brain. It's there to make you angry and react because making you angry and reacting, whether you're on the right and you react the way they want, or you're on the left and you're reacting to them. Yeah. That's the point. That's what makes the money. The, yeah. the, the whole Republican platform at this point is triggering the libs. It makes yeah. the libs angry. Fucking um, I, I told Rhino about this, but there's, I'm in Georgia, so a lot of my friends are conservative. There's no real way around that. I live here. Uh, but one of the members of my my D and D party before we ended up splitting ways due to ideological differences <laughs> asked me if I knew who Ben Shapiro was early on into our friendship. <laughs> and the first words out of his mouth after that was, "Oh, he makes those liberals so mad." And I'm like, oh, "God, you have to be a parody. You have to be a parody. I make fun of people like you for money. You have to not be real." Yeah. Nope. Nope. You're a real person. God damn it. <laughs> ben, yeah. ben Shapiro makes me happy because I just always remember that time when he thought that a wet vagina was a sign of disease. Or the <laughs> time he thought people would sell their uh, underwater property. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Aquaman. Man. Yeah. It's, it, it is sad and there's not really an equivalent. Like, I, I mean, you might find it here and there, you know, I don't think the whole left is like hundred percent great, but like, you don't find a lot of liberals campaigning, Democrats campaigning on, we want to make Republicans mad specifically. Not really. We don't really see like we have uh, the, the good Democrats, in my opinion, have an agenda that is I wish we could do, which is like, yeah. you know, help people, <laughs> you know, <laughs> pass things that would be good. And the protect other the side doesn't have other, an agenda. Yeah. It's really it's just depressing. It's like I would love to ask. Any Republican at this point in this <laughs> god awful mess, hey, what's a bill you want to pass? Like, tell me a bill, mm -hmm. and and maybe they would be oh, like, be well, a, the ban trans, -trans blah yeah. blah yeah, exactly. Yeah. Tell me a bill, a fine, a fiscal Federal plan, something, and they'll be like, cut taxes to zero. I'm like, damn it, okay, that's on me. I set the bar too low. <laughs> 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 but yeah, like in terms of just like nuts and bolts policy, we have a lot of ideas. Student loan forgiveness, you know, like we want to. Expand the fucking court, you know, <laughs> to, <a lot> of <laughs> stuff. to repeal, <laughs> by the way, to be able to I do mean, further good things. We, we to could like reduce the court Citizens too. That United. <laughs> yeah. So repeal Citizens United or do other things. Like, you know, like we have a lot of things we want to do because we think it would make the world better. And they have a lot of, I hate these, this group of people. And well, there's many groups of people. How do they pick just yeah. one? They hate many groups of people. And how do we make them mad slash suffer? And, and that's also all break the system. Right? Yeah. Like that's the and other thing that they want to do is, you know, tear down the government because they're anti-government. And, and so yeah. they they'll have the government handful, to bring it down. They'll have a handful of tokens so that you can't say that they are, you can't say they're racist because they have some uh, Republicans that are black. You can't say that. Ben Carson agrees like, with me. Yeah, yeah. You I'm not a racist. And then you'd be like, oh, well, they're not anti-trans because, yeah, well, Scott. they have Blair White there. And then you... And mm -hmm. then you actually listen to Blair White talk about the other people who are conservatives and used to be friends with hers. And it's like, but you stopped talking with them because they're transphobic. But you still agree with everything they said. What the fuck yeah. is wrong with you? Yeah. Um, and then you just, because I've, I've had that one happen more often than not, where I'll talk to somebody and go, your ideas are a little backwards. Maybe you could work on that. Oh, I'm not, uh, I'm not racist. I have black friends. I'm not transphobic. I have trans friends. I'm not this or that. Mm -hmm. It's like, look, I don't, I don't care who you have in your friend group. I'm talking about the shit you said. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Man. But yeah, you started Where There's Woke by yourself, trying to juggle everything. Yeah. And then I would jump in and help every now and then. And eventually I left my job. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> so I could work for him. Yeah, it's but, amazing yeah. having Lydia too. Like we, I loved, we, did, we started doing like the anti-woke roundup. She started doing it, and it, last month was great. And I'm excited January, to yeah. mm-hmm. to do that. Oh, yeah, sorry, two months ago. Now, yeah, but I'm excited <laughs> to do that one because it's like as much as the deep research is is fun, it's also the most time consuming. So it's hard to put out a lot of it, obviously, as oh, yeah. I'm sure you all know. And also, yeah. there's so many things that you want to cover and say like a little bit about, but not do a deep research on. So yeah. it's like the uh, the anti woke roundup is fun for that. So well, and I think I, what's interesting too is one of the stories from that has been exploding lately, which is the Ryan Walters libs of TikTok, oh, higher rate no. check, right? Oh, yeah. oh. And so I covered that as like, you know, oh, she's been appointed to his library advise, media advisory committee or whatever. And then next died, um, you know, after the the uh, fight in the bathroom. Oh, oh right. Yeah, yeah. In Oklahoma, next Benedict. And um, and higher rate check. And uh, Taylor Lawrence like interviewed her and higher rate check was just yeah, a mess. And so it's just interesting kind of watching this evolve and, Ryan Walters, also the superintendent for Oklahoma State um, and sort of his trajectory. So I'm sure I'm going to do another episode or two. That's been, folks, yeah, but. your biggest disappointment that it has been how much Republican government, like like actual people in government are just Whoa. like Fox News, like Ben Shapiro yeah. trolls. It's weird. You yeah. brought up the you brought up the next Benedict thing. So I was. Yeah, they. I've been trying to figure out like when they're going to decide what was the cause of their death. Um, And I just looked up and apparently uh, LGBTQ youth in Oklahoma have had a 200% rise in crisis contacts directly Mm. from the moment where the death was made public. Wow. God, that is, um, I, uh, I, I do not want to get any, any of our channels knocked out for the things I want to say. So I will uh, shut yeah. my mouth. Yeah. 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 It was incredible too. You know, the police came out with their initial statement saying, we're going to do oh, toxicology real quick. Just in case. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't. Well, it was like, too. yeah, nothing happened, but we're also too, yeah. waiting for toxicology. Like, yeah, she she got, out. she they got beat the shit back, needed to go to the hospital. And uh, yeah. yeah, clearly the death was in need of a toxicology report, even though she got beat to shit and they the, got yeah. beat to shit. And I made a, I, my, one of my friends who's a, who's a first responder, uh, who is working on a a video game I'm voicing for, uh, contacted me and was like, Hey, so I've done first responder stuff. This is what's going to happen with the next thing. There's going to be a deflection of the blame and it's going to happen very, very quickly. So like within minutes of that conversation, I made a video going, Hey, uh, so a friend of mine who's dealt with this shit as their career has said this is about the angle that things are going to go. So I'm making this to preempt it before things go that angle and people start deflecting the cause of death. And then within, you know, a few hours, we of course got the information on the cause of death getting afflicted. And strangely enough, after that, I started getting comments on the video about people saying, well, they couldn't have possibly been the beating because the videos came out and they were fine in the videos. Yeah. Yeah, Well, and that becomes the kind of thing where it's like, how important is this direct thing? Like whether, right. you know, right. the important thing is like, look at the state of LGBTQ rights in this state and look at how poor shit it is. And if it ends up that yep. somehow this person died coincidentally, I don't care. Like it's still like it's still focus on the and, yeah. wider like so, issues going on. You know, It's like the, the crowd that is all about facts don't care about your feelings. Just ignore <laughs> any facts that yeah. Yeah. just say that say that LGBTQ people like deserve equal rights. Like it's exactly like, the opposite. I have I have a whole um like I have a whole link tree list of that links to studies about it's specifically about trans people. Mm. Um there's some that delve into other things as well. But it's like Here's the section where, like, here's all the studies saying that being trans is a real phenomenon. It's mm-hmm. not just some, like, you know, the yeah. delusion, like they say it is. Yeah. Um, here's studies saying that uh, gender affirming care is has the best outcomes out of anything. Right. Um, here's studies saying that puberty blockers are actually really safe for kids. Here's a bunch of studies about, like, like it's just, oh my gosh. there's so much research mm-hmm. saying that, like, the best course of action for LGBTQ people is to be affirming yeah mm-hmm. you're like hey yeah you're yeah. valid 
But then did you see that um, uh, somehow WPATH's like internal messages were leaked like yesterday or something? And so now the right is all up in arms. They're like, this shows that WPATH, you know, like the, the supposed to be the the world organization over transgender health. They know that all this stuff is bad for trans folks and they're pushing it on them anyway. And you can tell in these messages and stuff. And so I am looking at that right now um, because there's no way any yeah, of that is true. I, there's yeah. no way. Was it? Um, I wonder what okay. that'll end up being. So my, my initial thought with that is something like maybe there was an internal discussion about the best way to word something to avoid the appearance of. Yeah, I, I looked at a, a few I, things, so, but. Um, like yesterday, I, I issued a statement on my own um, because uh, someone that I have criticized in the past posted to social media a suicide note. And as of now, I think we still don't know the status mm. of this person. I hope they're OK. Mm. Um, and I went back and forth between Cirrus and my partner. Uh, we workshopped it. We figured out the best way to say it. And, the, and you know, there might have been things said behind the scenes. It was like, this is what I'm trying to say. This is, these are the words I want to use. I want to make mm -hmm. sure I'm not coming across this way. And yeah. so like, there are things that if you take them out of context, it would yeah. be really easy to be like, oh, this guy's a piece of shit. He just yeah. said, of course. Text. Yeah. Yeah. So I could see an organization like that, having those sorts of internal discussions, figuring out the best way to say something. Yeah, yeah, we'll see what it ends up being. But I, I mean, we've we've done some similar coverage where I, I and how do we how do we fight back against this? Because this is mm -hmm. this is my question, because the overwhelming message of the right of the transphobes, which is working like it's 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 appealing to normies. That's my judge of like yeah. how much I'm worried about it. Yeah, it's working well, on normies and yet it's completely backwards. Their message of, hey. This is there's no research on this. Doctors just give just chop off boobs and chop off penises and they don't even ask so, the parents. They just do. It. And you find it's not only not that it's the opposite of that. It's like, yes, no, this is very exactly. well researched. They do. They're very conservative in how they approach it because yeah. it is children. You don't want to uh, do anything irreversible. Up. Yeah. Like they are very careful about it. The as long as they're following prevailing science, yeah. you know, and it, it's it's a case where it's like. The truth is the exact opposite of their bullshit shit message, and their message is winning. Like, what do we do? I don't. Yeah. yeah no, does anyone so, know? Um, <laughs> so Chat, can, how do we I fix can, everything? I can speak to this from experience because uh, my, well, our our youngest, the four year old, um, her father, like, she might be trans. So mm -hmm. she assigned male at birth, but currently, when she's at our house, she tells us she's a girl. She feels like a girl. Mm -hmm. Um, now she is young enough that this might just because like, you know, some days she wakes up and she's also a fruit bat. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I got her to eat bananas that way. It was great. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but like I need the eggs. So no, she, she could be trans. She could be not trans. And this is just a thing that kids do sometimes. Yeah. I don't know. But, um, this is like, we're going through counselors. We're talking to yeah. professionals yeah. and we're like, what is the best way to deal with this? And the best way to deal with it is just let them explore their gender identity and expression yeah. and everything on their own. Um, and be but supportive. I can with tell you this, the but their, their dad yeah. is the kind of person that is like, he is now, I, I don't think he is as in tune to the debate as I am as someone who spends way too much time on like Twitter and shit. Mm -hmm. um, but like he, like he would be one of the normies who is like, Oh, well, mm. we don't want to trans the kids. And yeah, yeah. he thinks that we are trying to trans the kid was like, no, actually I, if I could choose, I would have her not be trans because that would be an easier life for her. But if she is trans, the best thing to do is be accepting and affirming and mm -hmm. do everything we can to make sure she feels comfortable with that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it, these people often say things about kids that like, I'm, I'm like, do they not have kids or are they just so out of it? Cause it, you said four years old, like, you know, we, we have three kids and two of them have been four and they, they aren't aware enough to take some like politicized message about transness mm -hmm. and be like, I'm going to fuck with my parents. Watch this. Yeah. Yeah, hey, they have, they have I'm no a girl or boy. It's, it's like, it's actually really sad because like the, um, the older of uh, her two, um, he's, I, there's no indication that he is trans at this point. Um, he's just a boy. 
but sometimes he likes things that are typically thought of as girly things. He likes sparkly yeah. things. He likes yeah. pink. He likes all this other shit. And but like, we'll buy him shoes, and he'll be like, we, we have a, a purple and turquoise sparkly pair of shoes that mm. he chose out. And uh, yeah, no, my partner's bringing them. To yeah, there we go. <laughs> these are, these are the shoes he chose. Oh yeah. yeah. It, typically somewhat feminine. Um, when he picked them out, he's like, we need to keep these at your house because dad wouldn't like that. Oh man. That's oh, that's, like, that blows. That fuck, really sucks. fuck off. I know. Piece it's of so shit. sad. This is, this is why dear old dad, I'm so glad we do this because there's, there are questions I don't know with that. Like there are mm -hmm. challenges and I, and I think parents should admit this. Like, I don't know, like for example, with, with Arlo, our, our four-year-old is almost five. There are times when he expresses preferences where I'm like, yeah, okay, that's a typically, you know, feminine yeah. thing. Do I, like, I'm, I don't care. Like, I'm totally cool with yeah. it. But like, do I need to be worried about him getting make, made fun of? Should I like, yeah. you know, like, it's, I just don't know as a parent, like, should I, should I push so, it all? Or should I just let him do whatever? Or well, you know? I will so for, say what, what's interesting is like, like observing Phoebe, our, our oldest, who's six, when he brings up things like the other day in the car when I was driving them mm. home, he was like, um, he was like, well, I, you know, boys don't wear jewelry, so I can't wear that because boys don't wear jewelry. And then Phoebe chimed in and she's like, no, you can wear whatever you want. Boys wear jewelry. Girls wear jewelry. It doesn't matter. And so like she's kind of using. Because um, she's listened that, to us yeah, say that us a bunch talk of about times. It. And also, I, and I think she's seeing it expressed at school, too, because oh, she mentioned good. someone yeah. at school, yeah. a boy that wears necklaces and stuff because he likes them. Mm -hmm. Someone so who has like unicorn things because he likes them. Um, and she's trying to take that opportunity to help uh, Arlo understand that yeah. expression yeah, so is free. <laughs> one one of the great things, the uh, the schools in my area are actually really, really good about just letting kids be themselves. Yeah. Um, so like they and, and they've actually told us that like uh, the other kids in the class are excited to see like, oh, what are these two kids going to be wearing today because like bring? yeah because the one who we have, we have no indication that uh he is trans sometimes he likes to wear dresses mm -hmm. and he has worn dresses to school mm. and the other kids think it's great that's yeah cool um it's, so it's, it's amazing when people don't have a paradigm that's been forced fed to them already yeah how isn't they'll it just crazy accept yeah. things it's yeah weird. it's so and it's so <laughs> revealing i can't you know i i feel i feel a lot of pity for for shitty conservative parents who don't didn't let their kids like open them up to new experiences. Mm -hmm. Cause it's, you know, no one's perfect. Parenting is hard. I get retreating to kind of gender norms and out of familiarity. But like when you see like how much a, it's very clear they wouldn't know any of this shit unless we made them, you know, yeah. like they wouldn't know that girls only wear this and boys only wear this. If it weren't for all the media they consume yeah. at an early age, well, our kids, cause too many, too much screen, screen time, time. <laughs> but, but like you, you can almost trace exactly where this shit comes from. Like it doesn't come from nowhere. Like they'll, they'll, they'll see, Oh, uh, well tangled, you know, she looks like this and he looks yeah. like that. And then they, they incorporate that into their whole thing. Oh. And it's amazing. Uh, Oh, I like to tell this story. Um, because it really is all, uh, just relative. Like there's, there's no way it's all some inborn thing. Um, one time, you know, Phoebe and Arlo is we're, we're already talking about uh, we were brushing their teeth and uh, Arlo said he wanted to be a doctor. And Phoebe said, boys can't be doctors. And <laughs> we were like, what? Yeah. And I actually kind of love that. Yeah. And I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, yeah, they can't be doctors. I was like, no, they can. And she's like, oh, okay. And she's the one who actually listens to what we say and then repeats. She's like, yeah. oh, okay, Arlo, you can be a doctor because boys can be doctors too. And then we realized, oh, she just watches Doc McStuffins. That's yeah. all she knows doctors from. And so oh. she thinks doctors are girls. Yeah. And it's like, well, it's that's where all this shit comes from is TV. And but, but remember, right? we're told representation doesn't matter <laughs> yeah. and that it has yeah. no effect on anything. And then we get, and then we get, you know, literal reinforcement that actually no representation has an effect on how we approach things. But isn't it weird that the same group of people that try to argue that representation doesn't matter are also mm -hmm. the same group of people that at some point tried to do the whole video games cause violence the, the, the media yeah. has no influence yeah. on what you do say or think, but it does when we want it to, we think probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, um... and, and now I'm remembering where the, where the con like the conflict in my mind came from with Arlo and the girl's stuff is he early on wanted to just wear like 
princess stuff or girls clothes sometimes. Yeah. And my only thought was like, I have no problem with that, except I think he's only doing that because the girl stuff is more interesting. Yeah. yeah. I was like, if we could get him some, like some guys clothes that were like more interesting because the girl, oh yeah, dress, we got all this stuff. And then guys like pants, yeah, <laughs> pants on her shirt. You know, it's like, he's a kid. He wants cool, like interesting stuff. You know, Can and you I was like, imagine if you had the girl's clothes that also had, if you had the, the girl's clothes that also had deep pockets and there'd be no reason to have guys. Yeah, clothes. exactly. <laughs> Real pockets. It's true. Yeah, my partner's favorite shirt is your uh, shirt dress thing. I don't know. It's the one that has pockets. Yeah. And she gets yeah. so excited when she sees them. Look, half the things that I try to call shirts, Saki tells me, like, no, this is a dress. It goes down to my knees. I'm like, that. no, it's just a long shirt. That's just a long shirt. Oh, no, honey. You're so fortunate. I, so as a, as a slightly tall person, it's really hard for me to find shirts that don't show my butt crack when I bend over. <laughs> It's, I feel like that's a pants problem, isn't it? <laughs> well, <'cause, laughs> Maybe you're well, dressing this from the wrong end. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I, I mean, I, had, I can't okay. find a hat that I had covers a, my ass. <laughs> I had a shirt that fit me fine. And then I washed it once and it became a crop oh. top. Oh, yeah. Don't. No, no. Okay. You and I can do a class action lawsuit against Big Shirt. <laughs> That's now Small against, Shirt. <laughs> against Big Shirt that makes Small Shirts. Because it, okay. that happens to me so often. It'll be a shirt that I'm like, oh, I fucking love this shirt. This is great. And and then one wash, it's like, I can't wear it. It's a bikini top now. Yeah. So what the fuck you happened? You still wear it. You bought, yeah. so it's look, fine with me. You didn't so. lose a shirt. You gained a crop top. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I would, except I don't like the pinching on the armpits. That's the part that gets me, you know? It's like, oh, it yeah. really just digs in there. It's, like, it's, yeah. it's the collar for me. Yeah, that too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> laundry uh, stream tonight, everybody. Yeah. Give give us your hot oh, laundry yeah. tips. Want to talk Wash laundry? I, I have, no, I cold have laundry a massive... Tip, only in cold. Yeah, 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 I have yeah. a massive pile of clean laundry that just needs to be folded sitting on my bed that's, right now. That's, that's parent, me. That's parent life. Literally me right now. You are better than I am. Mine's in the dryer. That's what I do with the kids. And then when I tell them to get dressed in the morning, it's like, go find clothes from the dryer. <laughs> See, I know. Uh, uh, enough of my kids are old enough that now it'll be, I have forgotten to put my clothes in the dryer from the wash. And I'll be like, yeah. okay, go wash your clothes. But first put mine in the dryer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Man. Yeah. Uh, so I got people in the chat telling me to use cold water. No, I, I use cold water. I do. It might be so, the dryer. I haven't figured it out either. Some, something's doing it. I, I don't, I don't know, use man. like I don't use high heat on the dryer. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big shit. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. washing cold, it's fine. Yeah. I mean, I guess it can hang it afterwards, but. And I, Rhino, have you ever had this fun scenario? You have a, you have like a, a dedicated troll that's in your YouTube comment section, and then they make their way into the chat, and you're just like, "Oh, the perfect opportunity to kick your shit in is here." <laughs> I think I've seen who you are talking about in the chat. Oh. Well, there. Well, you can't see them anymore. They <laughs> they came in, and I just went. I I, I saw them earlier. I'm like, I think I remember that name from when you were talking about them before. Isn't it amazing how much time certain people have to be? <laughs> annoying I, it's I amazing almost feel, i almost feel bad hiding them from my channel because i know that like this is all they've got <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah it was like it was one thing being a troll in 2011 or some shit like okay yeah you're on the cutting edge of assholery Twitter's but now in the year 2024 it's like are you still doing this man like i'm not affected by this at it's all like anymore. you're in your mid 30s my yeah. guy can you go make friends i'm it's not your friend we're, we're all sad. content creators for like i think we all do content creation for our career mm -hmm. now yeah, we do. yeah. yeah. You, you don't you don't get to that point without like not being affected by the troll comments yeah i mean I, I, I'll certain say things this affect me. me i'll admit yeah. certain things affect me but the 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 classic Try hard, constant troll. That absolutely does not. <laughs> That's just no. <laughs> I, I I see that person, and it's 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 yeah. You know, there's Sorry. a few of them, but I I see that person, and my I immediately think there's that first feeling of like the wave of nostalgia, of like ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, familiarity you from a time machine. <laughs> yeah, I was I was actually again. <laughs> I was actually happy the first time I had someone who's um. So I, for, for years, I, I did my videos as like, I had a rhinoceros avatar wearing a bow tie yeah. and mm. that was both for, um, privacy reasons and, 
uh, ease of editing. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like I've recently transitioned to using my face for over the last uh, year and a half or so. Yeah. Um, like it was part rhino, part your face for a while. I could transition. <laughs> well, it. actually, so I, I mostly or do response videos. And so like when HRT, I'm playing the other person's video, rhino. I still have the rhino there. And then I have uh, their video small in the corner. So that it, that's a good way to avoid copyright things. Um, but um, I, I was actually happy when I found the, the, the first person who like went out of their way to comment on multiple multiple of my videos about how ugly they thought i was oh it's just like oh this is amazing and especially because like i i have guests on my channel semi-regularly every time it's a woman the comment section is just filled with people commenting on her appearance oh god yeah like positive negative doesn't matter i show my face most of the comments have nothing to do with it. So when yeah, I finally got matter. one, it's like, oh, I have now experienced like one tenth of one percent of what women <laughs> on the ex internet experience every day. But yeah. sure, sexism's gone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep. Boy, I, I am loving the laundry talk going on in the chat. That is, that is great. What other mundane thing? Welcome hey, to the laundry tube, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> hey, laundry chat over there. Hey, how much uh, borax are you guys using? Because I've gotten in the, hey, you want to you you get those borax? sheets clean? Those, yeah, I'm oh, yeah, starting getting in the borax. That's so fun. my, uh, so I have a thing about, I, I, I am mildly germaphobic. Mm. Um, so like I mentioned, I have ADHD. My partner also suspects that I might have autism as well. Just a smidge, um, just a little bit. Just a smidge, yeah. Spice <laughs> of autism. Um, for flavor. It's just you. Um, as he says, a touch of the tism. Yeah. A touch of the tism, yeah. Touch of tism. Um, but so her kids are at the stage where there's just snot everywhere. Oh man. Mm. And they like and they are just defiant enough that I, if, like, if I tell them to use a Kleenex, they will like lock eyes with me and go. No. <laughs> and it's disgusting. Oh um, my God. But they're also at an age where sometimes they need to sleep in mummy's bed. And uh, so like, that's, that's one of the things that she kind of like gives me the side eye about is like every time that they leave, I now have to wash my, um, like the 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 blanket and the sheets and everything have to be washed on the sanitized setting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I start to think like, why, why, why would anything not be on the sanitized set? I, yeah, I want everything sanitized. Well, because, because the sanitized setting like uses heat, it. and that makes the shirt yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you can't shirt. give me you know a set of sanitizer. Happen. It's like giving me a boost setting on the vacuum we have. It's like, well, that's what I want to just do. Why would I, when times. am I ever like, yeah, I don't want to get all this stuff. Like I just want to get some of it. <laughs> just no, all bit. the time. Make the whole plane out of the, I use that joke too much. <laughs> oh, there, there have been times when we've had to stay up late because we were waiting for the, the sheets to dry. Oh uh, yeah. Cause yeah. like, oh, the kids have like the kids slept in our bed and they wiped their nose all over <laughs> everything. Oh, that's right. Okay. I don't have that, but I did. I never thought of myself as like a neat person until living in this house, <laughs> till having these kids and realizing like, gotcha. I, they have no concept. It's amazing. The things you don't realize you have to teach kids. Like they'll take, yeah. they'll have a plate of pizza and you're like, yeah, you can have that pizza and they'll grab it. And then they'll like, oh, here's your tuxedo dad, <laughs> you know, whatever. They'll just wipe. And you're like, you don't yep. know yeah. that. They don't, oh, that's grease. That ruins your shit. You know, and it's like, yeah. they had to ask me, they're like, what's grease? And I was like, ah, it's the fucking devil is what it is. <laughs> It'll ruin oh, anything. I've, <laughs> I have to explain every, every day. Like this is, you know, you need to wash your hands after you use the toilet because you don't want to get sick because there yeah. are germs there. Yeah. <laughs> what's a germ? Uh, I've never seen one dad. <laughs> yeah kids are gross love them anyway speaking of kids yeah perhaps yeah. we should go see if ours left the house or burned it down yet <laughs> well the room we're in isn't burned the yeah. four seasons total landscaping i know i was thinking in. when we were when we were hopping on i was like man if only they could text us like if they needed anything um, you're you, yours are is, old enough to text huh uh, oh. yeah so the thing oh. that they text is hey can you please unlock the switch so i can play video games <laughs> <laughs> that'll be that'll be arlo yeah yep. yeah he's that's basically was our interaction before this <laughs> yep yep he uh, wanted to just play video games yeah speaking of a touch of the tism he he was <laughs> he was he wants to play i got him into breath of the wild on the switch oh. which is awesome i love it but like yeah. he can't now he and i i don't blame him now he can't do anything else and like he got home and I was like, all right, in my mind, I'm thinking we're going to have to be doing this live stream for a while. So I'll save the switch for then, yeah. you know? And so yeah. 
I was like, he's like, can I play? And I was like, hey, yeah, in a little bit, you're going to be able to play. And then he just sits there and he goes, there's nothing I want to do. Like, he <laughs> was like, what should I, I don't know. I was like, why don't you do, do a puzzle, draw some. I don't want to do any of those things. <laughs> he's four and he's like, I found the best thing, which is Switch. And why would I do another thing? And I'm like, oh, I don't have a counter argument for you, man. Like, that's my middle child. Shit. We are, we are having, um, we're having him, uh, assessed for autism mm. same thing breath of the white like if like he, he has zero social awareness so like everybody else could be in the middle of like this big heated fight and he will like walk into the room and be like yeah can i play the switch now can you i need you to i need you to like yeah i know you're like you're fighting with everybody right now like you're trying desperately to get a child to put clothes on <laughs> when they're running out that's also such a normal kid thing though too we, we face this too where it's like he's, is that normal kid stuff or not you know yeah he's 12. oh okay well. he's old enough that, like, <laughs> he, he should have some awareness yeah, at this fair. point <laughs> yeah but and like, then there's the adhd if, component if you, too yeah, yeah. If, if you talk to him about uh breath of the wild he will talk your ear off for hours and hours and hours about all the things he did and all the things he wants to do and all the things he oh, can man. do and I, I'll, I'll, can i can i talk to you <laughs> put him on sure. <laughs> <laughs> i love, oh, love breath of the wild it's so so fun hey the lemon How's it going? Yeah, opening arguments. Please check out opening. Oh, I got. We got to put that out. It's gonna be. It's gonna be fun. Um, on the Fourteenth Amendment stuff with oh, Trump because, yeah. God, it's so fucking frustrating. Rapid response. <laughs> it, well, yeah. you know what? I I I don't know how you feel about this, but I almost feel better with him being on the ballot because I would rather see him lose in a way where it's harder for him to be like, oh, they rigged it. Because if he's not on the ballot, he can just be like, well, they clearly they rigged it. I wasn't even on the ballot. Is Colorado a state that's even close normally? I can't remember. No, it's no, pretty like blue. It's blue. Yeah. So, and, and we're winner take all for the most part in every yeah, so electoral he's, college state. state. So it wouldn't matter. So like he's he, going to lose it anyway. So yeah. you might as well let him lose it but while I, on the ballot. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, look, Although to, I, to I certainly do understand episode. why you wouldn't want to have someone who incited an insurrection on the ballot to begin with. Well, that being to said, my own episode, mostly I'm just so fucking frustrated because it's the goddamn constitution. It's a hundred percent clear. And all these fucking yeah. originalists are all of a sudden like, well, but the consequences though, like what if we do that? And you're like, really? When it's a trans, when it's a, a pregnant person, you're going to let die because yeah. of whatever the fuck originalism. You're like, that's fine. What's, what do we care about? I don't, consequences? I don't fucking understand originalism. Cause like, if you go it's back and actually read, you want. <laughs> if you read the fucking shit that the, the, founding fathers wrote they didn't agree with any they didn't agree with each other on anything like yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's all it's, of their writings are like is, this other like jefferson's writing why uh the other one was you know, like, i don't know yeah, I it, yeah. it's just they, it's outcome driven they yeah. want to find a way to justify their outcome it's never based on any actual history yeah. the actual history is honestly usually pretty interesting and like i don't yeah. mind taking into account the, you know, yeah, the, what they wanted, but like, yeah, but it's whatever just, English it's common so law in obviously three was doesn't, yeah, fucking matter. it's so obviously yeah. pick and choose though. Like they ignore it when yeah. they, and that, that's what's driven me absolutely insane about this 14th Amendment case is it's so fucking abundantly clear that, like, yeah, it says an insurrectionist can't hold on. Like it's just, mm -hmm. it's perfectly clear. And mm -hmm. like, I get that there's problems with how to implement that, and I get it, but the the part where they decide, like, well, there's problems in how to implement this because, you know, different states might do different things. So let's decide it in a way that means there is no 14th Amendment Section 3 anymore. Like, that can't be right. I'm sorry. That can't be the right decision. You're just yeah. wrong about that. And uh, that's so that's the episode. <laughs> <laughs> just, you don't have to listen. No, I will, listen. I will listen to it anyway. Yeah. See how uh, an actual lawyer responds to my frustrations with this decision. And uh, <laughs> well, that'll be that'll be where we, we are. It's, yeah, yeah, it's that's one of my favorite things about opening arguments is that it's it's you a non-lawyer just like giving mm -hmm. like this is what makes sense to me and then a lawyer coming in and being like yeah okay that makes sense but here's why it's a little bit different when talking mm -hmm. legally yeah. speaking and um and it's it's great like i'm sure sirs can attest that like there there have been episodes of twit tweets where like so the the format of our show normally is we we cover three or four news items and then we like just read some people's tweets and roast them. Yeah. Um, and there have been a couple times where like for the news items, I've actually like listened to an episode of opening arguments and taken a bunch of notes because oh, nice. like, you guys are covering it in ways that, um, that most. And then, the and then I'll not. hear him splurge yeah. about you guys for a little bit. Yeah. Every time. That's so nice. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So, well, um, one thing that I saw pop up um, was the Mifepristone case that's mm. going to be going up to SCOTUS. So Alliance Defending Freedom is behind it. And essentially, New Republic put an article out about this that um, ADF, they they were counsel for, you know, they represented in 303 via Lennis. Oh, the Lennis. website thing? Yeah. Yeah. Where there were, you know, people that were harmed that were named in the lawsuit that didn't exist. Right? <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. This one, God, they amazing. created a company. The plaintiff doesn't exist. The yeah. plaintiff was yeah. incorporated the day after Dobbs. Yep. It's, and it's, it's, it's a company it's that's fake. an amalgamation of companies. And th- th- what gets me is they will literally be like, hey, you on death row about to be executed. You don't have any recourse yeah. here. Sorry. Yeah. Now you don't have any standing. They'll use standing to be like, yeah, you know, if anybody has standing and somebody who's about to be killed by the government, yeah. like what I don't care yeah. what standing means, they have standing. And yeah, then well, they'll be well, like, that you like, who it, created it doesn't a matter fake if you're company. actually innocent. Yeah, there's that. You still but you, you who create a fake company that doesn't actually exist that might hypothetically one day have to do something for a gay person. You do have standing. And I, yeah. and it's hard to communicate how fucking wrong that is because it's too complicated for most people. Mm. Like your average person, you're like, I don't, how do I communicate that? They just made this up. Like they they're up there in their robes looking all official. And so you're like, well, the chief justice Roberts. It's like, they just fucking made it up. They just made it up, man. Yeah. It's all fake. Yeah. Yeah. It's so frustrating. Uh, anyway, well, we got to get to editing, or do we have a time okay. we're trying to hit? <laughs> um, no, I uh, I was happy to go for as long or as short as you guys wanted to. So if you guys got to get going, yeah, you got a lot. If that's of... okay, we yeah, I'm just Thomas. About Thomas editing, has a lot of yeah. content to edit, so that yeah. I can have entertainment <laughs> for the next few days. Yeah, uh, so, uh, we have a we have a dad's coming out tonight, and oh we have God. an yeah. OA yeah. coming two, out. Two tonight. episodes out tonight. We got to go get to work, yeah. but. Uh, no, seriously, I, I, I'm very happy to take the time. Thank you so much for inviting us. Yeah, oh, really so appreciate fun. it. Thank you so much Thank for saying yes. On, I seriously. It. No, yeah, yeah. anytime. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, uh, it's an honor to hear that you've listened to so much just, of my stuff. I didn't. Well, I, didn't I need to get zero does trifecta now. I just need to get Tom on here because. Oh, oh, there you go. go. Yeah. yeah. Someone so with Tom and Haley. maybe less time than me, but probably not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I it's just got him to shock his balls earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone go check out Dear Old Dads for that reference. You're missing out. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for joining oh, me. Thank and, you. Uh, Seriously. Yeah, have a great evening. Been thanks. a pleasure. You thanks, too. guys. Bye. Bye. Oh shit, we're still in the thing.